Uff, okay. So, good hands. Ne? Um, this video is in, uh, entitled like Payback. So, uh, Payback. And uh, why Payback is because of the semi final in the Japan World Cup. It's the first time England have played New Zealand since that match. And uh, I think they're going to be fireworks. New Zealand are going to be fired up for this game. Uh, all the coach, Foster, who was involved in that game, uh, has to do is play a, uh, put a replay on of the semi-final for New Zealand to get fired up for it. Um, but saying that, they had a good matchups uh, across the park. Um, the teams were announced, and I really wanted to wait for the teams to be announced in order to do this video because uh, both coaches have a tendency to select, uh, change their selection. You know, uh, so um, I think that was kind of relevant. Usually, I do the preview video well early into the week, but not for this game because um, the coach's tendency is to do something and it's unexpected. And for um, for matchups across the park, it's kind of unrivaled. I can't really, I can't wait to see this game actually. So uh, we've got uh, the group against uh, Genge. Genge is on fire at the moment and he's playing really well. He's a great scrummager. Plays for Leicester Tigers. He's a bit of a tough guy. And uh, I think the group fancies himself in that, in that position and he's going to kind of match him every every step of the way. Um, the the two stalwarts in the New Zealand side, Vitalik and Whitelock, they are going up against uh, two stalwarts in, in the second row. Uh, in the England side, Toje and uh, Johnny May. So that's going to be kind of interesting. Johnny May is notorious for winding people up. So I wonder if he can get and uh, Whitelock and um, uh, uh, Vitalik skin. I'm not sure if he can. Um, in the back row, uh, it's going to be interesting too. Uh, you got Sam Simmons, who has plenty of pace. Uh, but he's playing at six this week, which is not his preferred uh, posi position. And usually is eight. Artie Zavea is Superman and uh, will no doubt have an impact on the game, a uh, positive in impact. And they got got uh, Papa Louis and uh, Tom Curry for England. Um, number nine is a great matchup as well with Aaron Smith starting again for New Zealand. It looks like they're gonna go with Aaron Smith uh, towards the World Cup. The the standing uh, Christie, the standing uh, number nine, didn't have a great game against Scotland. So um, Aaron Smith is definitely uh, on top of his form at the moment. He got two tries, I think, the last time he played. And Van Porfoy is the new new blood in the England side. So it's uh, Eddie Jones has a uh, issue. Bringing new players through, which I'll see with, which we'll see with the selection of this team, um, but uh, that could be a good. Uh, Aaron Smith has been the best number nine in the world for a long time, so Van uh, Pofa is going to relish the opportunity to take that mantle. Um, so that's going to be another good matchup. Moanga and Marcus Smith. Marcus Smith is a great player. But it's amazing to see how Eddie Jones can suck the life out of somebody. And uh, Moanga, I think, is growing into his role as first choice number 10. And he has plenty of experience in that position. So I, I, I'd have to favour Moanga. In there. Then you got the centres. Um, Jordi Barrett, who usually plays 15, but has done a decent job at inside centre. And uh, uh, Rico Iwane, who usually plays 14. But it's done a pretty decent job at uh, outside centre this season. So again, they're playing out of position, but uh, mm, not sure uh, whether they're going to work well together. If it does click, it's going to be an awesome performance because uh, Iwane has got like an incredible pace and um, uh, Jordi Barrett has got all the skills kicking. He's a big guy. He's a big lump as well. Um, and he's very physical, so he can definitely handle the number 12 position, I think. Uh, but opposing them, they have Farrell and uh, Manu to, to Elagi, and then the strikes fear into the hearts of men. 
Um, he's kind of a talisman for um, England and uh, over the past couple of seasons when he's played they've been great because he gives them that, that break that they need. They've always had pace and, and good players to play off um, but um, he, he offers something different in the England attack and uh, will he be that talisman to, today? Uh, not today but uh, on Sunday <coughs> It's a difficult call, but uh, let's keep going through the, the side. Um, uh, Delia and Jack Noel, uh, Caleb Clark, who I'm a fan of recently. He's he's adding more to his game. He was a battering ram at first, and uh, I think I saw him give a pass um, again in the Scotland game. But again, uh, that's just me teasing him. He's actually a great player. I really like him. And uh, he seems really committed to this uh, role that he's got. And um, yeah, Johnny May is going to be interested in whether he can handle him or not. And then you got Bowden. King Bowden is back on in the fullback position. Maybe that's going to be his uh, his position for the foreseeable future. But I'm not sure. And Freddie Stewart, who had a good game against Japan, um, he's uh, rounding out the team at 15 for England. Uh, predictions is going to be battles all over the park. Uh, the the forwards are going to have a real struggle to arm wrestle to see who gets the dominance. Um, Cody Taylor is starting at two. Again, he he's come back into a little bit of form, uh, but again, it's going to be another tester for him. Uh, so if he plays well, I think the New Zealand pack will go well. Luke Cowan Dickey, again, a bit reckless, uh, gives away a lot of penalties and stuff like that. Um, but he's very good around the park, so that may uh, temper his kind of um, his, uh, propensity to make mistakes. Um, in the back row, Billy Vinopola is there. Uh, I like Billy, he's a very nice guy, but um, Artie Savea is against him. Like, is that, is that the person you want against Hardy Surveyor? Hardy Surveyor has lightning as well. He's lightning quick. So I'm not sure like uh, the back row really matches up. It's like definitely new. I, I would say the front the front row and the second row are kind of evenly matched. But I think the back row, New Zealand, had the advantage. 10 to 10, Marcus Smith and Moanga. I think Moanga has the advantage because he's allowed to play as a 10, you know. He doesn't have another 10 standing outside him telling him what to do. Not that I'm saying that Farrell does that, but um, that's what it seems like at times. But um, I would say then um, the centres. Manu Tuolagi is always a wild card. Like you never know what he exactly he's going to do. So, um, you know, he could win the game for... Um, England, or you could go out, off after 10 minutes, you know, so it's a, uh, it's a crapshoot with that guy, but he's a phenomenal player, without doubt, and Farrell has been playing really well, and a lot of people were calling for Farrell to start at 10, which wouldn't have been a bad call, but if they haven't got any other centres, but I tried to look up the Farrell uh, win loss rate when he plays at 10 and 12, but I couldn't find it. But that would be in interesting to see. And uh, on the wings, um, Eddie Jones has gone for uh, dependability, Jack Noel and um, Johnny the Youngling May. Um, but if you look at the New Zealand backline, Aaron Smith, uh, Moanga, Jody Barrett, uh, Iwane. And then you got uh, Bowden Barrett at fullback, Caleb Clark, and uh, um, Tilia, the new guy who's good to tries against Scotland. Then that seems like a very rounded, balanced backline. And if that can click, then England are in a lot of trouble. If uh, Tulagi clicks, then New Zealand are in a lot of trouble. So it's going to be um, one or the other. I tend to favour New Zealand for this game. I think uh, recently when they've been under pressure, they have performed. 
They pulled it out of the fire quite a few times. They had a poor performance against Scotland for 60 minutes. Uh, so I expect them to do much better. Like I say, they don't need much motivation. England, on the other hand, they they're going. They seem like they're going through the motions. Um, this is why Eddie Jones has had quite a lot of criticism, is because the team doesn't seem to be fired up and playing for him or for English uh, supporters. Um, they've actually addressed that in press press. Uh, press conferences as well you know the relationship between England and their supporters and that's not a good look when their supporters are questioning their kind of uh, commitment to providing a good product for English supporters you know and you have to talk about it as a coach uh, something's wrong so in England you just get the sense that something is up something is wrong and in New Zealand um, with the extra coaches that they brought in uh, it seems to be more um, more uh, what to say uh, consistent in their approach to the games like people are being played out of position but they've been done so consistently if you like and uh, I think this is um, you had Takeyako, Takeyako, Takeyako uh, in a two to be their best team but it's almost their best team um, they got some power off the bench as well, Takeyako included, and Frizzell as well in the back row. So um, I would have to, I, I, if New Zealand click, they're going to be alarm bells for England. And um, I think they could go down by 20 points um, at Twickenham, and that would be apt revenge for the semi final loss. So I'm going to go for, I've increased my points margin actually, uh, the time I was making this video. Uh, I'm going to go uh, New Zealand by 20 points, roughly 40 points to 20 points, uh, 20 points uh, differential. So yeah, England, watch out. Uh, I hope you play well, but uh, I think New Zealand are going to have too much. But let's see, England have uh, pulled uh, stuff out of the bag before, so um, yeah, let's see. But that's my uh, prediction, um, New Zealand by 20, Oof. that's, uh, yeah, heart overhead, yeah, probably, but um, there we go. All right, cheers, enjoy the game, bye-bye.